This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. We have made some good progress on the conveyor belt so far. Not only can we move a panel in and out nice and easy, but we can also clamp it down in place nice and rigid so that it's not gonna move around during the pasting or placing process in the machine. But there's a little nugget still left that we need to address. When OpenPMP does its fiducial calibration that we looked at in the last episode, it needs to generally know where the fiducial is, at least kind of. But you kind of have to be in the ballpark for it to be able to pick up on it. Because of this, we need to know about where the panel is in space using some kind of sensor or limit switch. So then the question becomes, how do we check to see where a panel of indeterminate size, shape, or reflectivity could be? Well, there are a lot of different ways to detect things in the world of sensors and switches. The first and maybe the most obvious is just putting a switch there. When the panel enters the conveyor belt area, if it just pushes down on a limit switch, that would tell us when it's starting and it would, when it pops up the other side, tell us where the edge of the board is. However, having a spring from the limit switch pushing up on the panel is not gonna bode well for getting good contact on the timing belts and having it move forward pretty cleanly. So that's kind of not the most ideal. Then there's ultrasonic distance sensors. These sensors will shoot out a really high pitched sound wave and check to see when it comes back. And then based on how long it takes to do that, they can figure out about how far away things are. If we use one that's big enough, little small holes like through hole components and mounting holes and cuts in the panel are not really gonna influence the measurement that we get from it. And then the third and final option I'm considering is light sensors. These come in two varieties, ones that are like a brake beam sensor where you have a light and then something detecting the light on the other side and when you break it, you can detect that something's in the way. You can get these things in a single unit like this where it's all built into the same package or you can buy them separate and mount them independently. You have to make sure they're all lined up but they work just the same. And then the other type is where the light source and the detector are on the same side and the light bounces off whatever you're trying to detect and comes back to the receiver. This is exactly what we use in the feeder to detect how far around the indexing wheel has moved. These might work really well but I am a little worried about the different material that the PCB could be made out of or the different solder mask and reflectivity could maybe influence the signal we get back and make it not super reliable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try those last two options, the ultrasonic and the light sensors, and I'm gonna see which one is going to work the best with a little bit of prototyping, and then we can implement it into a fully fledged, integrated part of the machine. What the heck is this? On here lies one of each kind of sensor. I have the classic ultrasonic sensor that you'll find in almost every single Arduino kit on the planet. It's the HCSR04. I probably won't use this actual module long term. I'm just using it for testing out the methodology of using ultrasonic sensing. And then I have a VCNT2020 from an old board that I milled in like really early feeder prototype videos. Something that's really important about the sensor is it needs to plug into a limit switch port on the motherboard. This means that it needs to be able to put out a digital IO high or low indicating whether or not there's a board there. I can't have an I2C interface. I can't have an analog voltage. It needs to just spit out a one or a zero based on if the board is there. This presents a number of challenges, <laughs> but I think I have solutions for all of them. For the ultrasonic sensor, I think I just need a microcontroller on board to handle this. The interface to talk to the SR04 module is like an echo and a trigger pin and you need this really precise timing and stuff. So I think it's kind of necessary if there's going to be an ultrasonic sensor on this limit switch board detector thing, it's gonna have to have a microcontroller that's deciding whether or not to flip the pin high or low back to the motherboard like through the actual limit switch connector. Not ideal to have an entire microcontroller on board, but if you actually look at these things, there already is a microcontroller on board that's handling all this processing. So I think it's just kind of necessary if you're doing an ultrasonic sensor, a microcontroller is just part of the game. I have not yet been able to find an ASIC that handles 
actually driving these speakers and figuring out the distance and then maybe being able to spit out a binary, is it closer than this distance? SparkFun has effectively a clone of the SR04, which has an STM8 on it, I think, which would be a really good reference design. And I think ultimately, if we go with the ultrasonic sensor, it'll look something like that. And then the second option is the reflective sensor. This sensor just puts out an analog voltage based on the distance and based on how reflective the thing in front of it is. But I need a binary output. So I'm actually gonna try and use an op amp. Where did it go? He beat me before, but I got him this time. After a vicious battle to the death, I got this thing acting as a comparator. There we go. Just like that. So on one of the inputs of this op amp, I have a reference voltage set. And then on the other one, I have the output from the sensor, the analog voltage. And then based on the way that I wired it up, I made it so that if the analog voltage goes above the threshold that I set, it makes the output go all the way high, or at least most of the way high. It's not a rail to rail op amp. But if it's below that threshold, it goes down to zero. So we're getting a binary output from an analog sensor, which is exactly what I need on this whole module, at least in theory. I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> Maybe my vanquishing of the op amp was a little preemptive, but we'll see. So I'm gonna put a little bit of code on this Arduino that's gonna read out a signal from the ultrasonic sensor, and then also from the analog sensor directly, and then also the processed one from the op amp, and we can see what things look like coming out of these two sensors. And then we'll run some tests and see what works. Haha. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh, it works! <laughs> I actually used it up him correctly! <laughs> yes! Interesting. I wonder if it's because it's brighter. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've already learned a number of things just from playing with this for like 20 seconds. So like I said, on this plot, I have all three of the signals I could possibly pull out of this breadboard. I have the distance measurement from the ultrasonic, that's in green. Then I have red, which is the raw output from the optical sensor, the reflective sensor. And then blue is the output from the op amp, which really should be a binary signal processed from the reflective sensor. So the first thing that I'm noticing is I have a big old window right next to me here. And if I just block some of the light coming from the window, not directly above the reflective sensor at all, but just keeping some of the sunlight from shining, I can change whether or not it triggers. In the context of a feeder, for example, where we're already using this sensor, it's all enclosed by a bunch of 3D prints. It's all kind of nestled in there and the light settings are not really gonna change. It's all really dark in there, except for the light that's being put out by the sensor itself. But in this module, it's gonna be out in the open. It's gonna be sitting right there on the machine and if it's sunny in that room, that could really mess with the settings here. Another thing that I'm noticing is I don't get really any reaction from the reflective sensor until I get to, I don't know, maybe five millimeters away from it, which isn't the end of the world, but it also means that it's gonna have to be really close to the bottom of the board. It definitely has a much smoother signal than the ultrasonic sensor, but if it only triggers really, really close and also ambient light affects it a ton, uh, I'm not so about it. The ultrasonic works really well though. The signal is a bit messy, but it's pretty easy to fix that with a little bit of like running average signal processing. And it works in pretty much the range that I want. That's cool. All right, so right now I really think that the ultrasonic sensor is going to be the move here. So let's bring these over to the machine and see what we get in terms of being able to reliably find the edge of a panel moving along the conveyor belt. All right, that's about as definitive as you can get. The ultrasonic sensor is 
really, really repeatable with being able to place the panel at a very specific conveyor belt distance. With just the total raw output from the sensor and setting it over a certain threshold number, I managed to get repeatability down to one millimeter increments, and every time I popped it over that one specific millimeter, it would trigger definitively every time with no fluttering. I tried to do half a millimeter, and if I had a little bit of software debouncing in there, I'm sure it would work just fine. But this is plenty for what we need with the fiducial calibration. It can hunt around for a fiducial in effectively the entire field of view of the camera, which is bigger than one millimeter <laughs> by quite a bit. So this is plenty precise for us to know generally where the panel is in space and then have the camera find out where the fiducial is from there. The reflective sensor, however, did not do well in literally every metric I was looking for. Not only did me opening and closing my curtain change whether or not it triggered, but even sometimes when I had my finger over it, it would flutter, and the board itself still did not do a very good job. I also tested the difference between the gold reflectivity of the panel and the glossy black solder mask. Huge discrepancy, huge difference between the two. And also because the sensor is so small, if it catches a through hole or a mounting hole or a slot, it sees no panel because it just goes straight through the slot. I really, really wanted this sensor to work because it's already part of this whole system by being in the feeders, but it's just not meant for this. These sensors, I'm pretty sure, were designed around the idea of making some kind of optical encoder and having a wheel with slots or black and white delineations on it that will reflect different amounts and you're able to tell how far the wheel has spun. This is just not the use case for this sensor. And I knew that going in, but I still wanted to try it. Now I understand that this is just this specific IR sensor and I'm not discounting all IR sensors in general for doing this job. I know that there are a bunch of different ones that handle all kinds of smart signal processing and can make a really intelligent decision about where something is in space regardless of its reflectivity. I don't know how the heck they do that, but I know there are sensors like that out there. If you have experience with these kinds of things and you think that one of those fancier reflective sensors is going to be better than the ultrasonic, please leave a comment and tell me what that sensor is. I am pretty happy with the ultrasonic sensor solution, but if there's something that could be a little smaller and maybe cheaper, I'm all ears. But in the meantime, the ultrasonic works super well. The bill of materials cost for it is really, really cheap. And there's an awesome reference design from SparkFun about how to integrate your own microcontroller in it, which I can just use to make the decision of whether or not to flip the pin high or low. Also, maybe part of the reason I wanted to use the optical sensor was because I really wanted to try again with op amps. <laughs> I didn't want to leave it on a bad note. And granted, a comparator is like a pretty simple, straightforward way to use an op amp, but still, I wanted to use one for something. I wanted to... I wanted to conquer it. So the next steps with this whole detector module is gonna be taking the SR04 schematic and putting it into my own module. It'll have mounting points specifically to go onto the index frame. It'll have a pinout specifically to plug into the limit switch connector for the conveyor belt motor. It'll be one nice neat little module that takes care of detecting this, figuring out whether or not it's higher or lower than a certain threshold, detects the panel, and sends a signal back to the motherboard. But making this panel detection module is a project for another video. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like The Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I just feel like I have to end every video with that. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has been making all of the different revisions of all the different boards for this project, and they've always come out absolutely beautiful. From the time that I place an order to the time that I have the boards in my hands is usually about a week or less. They have a whole team of engineers that checks over all of your designs as soon as you submit them. They have caught a ton of mistakes of mine in the past, and then they let me know about it so I can change it and resubmit it so I get the boards I'm actually trying to make. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Description where you can become a patron. Become a patron. Become a patron. Become a patron.